gonna start on this strap. And here first, I like to make a couple of strap keepers to hold the extra strap since this is a belt style strap. You can use hardware for this and there are directions on how to place it in the pattern. So first I draw a horizontal line in the center and I added a bit of double-sided tape. I am gonna fold this down to the line and you want this to remain thin, so don't bother stabilizing this. So here my super thin leather is actually a good thing because this is gonna be a very small piece that we're doing. So once you get both pieces done like this, you're gonna top stitch both long edges with 1 8 inch seam allowance. Once you have it top stitched, you are going to fold it right sides together so that you see the wrong side, you see the seam, and you're gonna sew the raw edges together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Then you're going to trim it pretty close. I have here this one sewn, and you are going to flip it right side out. And this is your strap keeper. It's a little bit bigger than what your strap is going to be because this is actually gonna hold two layers of strap together. We're going to do the same steps with both strap pieces. There is a short strap piece and a long strap piece. What you're going to want to do, and I've already prepped this one, is draw a horizontal line across the center and then this black part is my stabilizer. You can use whatever you normally use for stabilizing. I'm choosing to only do it on one side and where I put that I made it a half an inch wide and I put it halfway. I basically divided each half into half and I centered my stabilizer into the half that's closest to the center line. I've also added a strip of double-sided tape centered on top of the stabilizer and centered in this half too. So basically there's four sections here and I put the double-sided tape in the middle of the two sections that are closest to the center line. And the reason I do that is because my machines do not like to sew over double-sided tape and this will give you the least amount, the least chance that you'll be sewing over the tape. I'll remove the wrap and fold each half to that center line. And if you are making a strap wider than what the pattern calls for, you'll need to adjust all your measurements. can also do this if you want to do a raw edge strap. Again, you would just have to adjust your measurements to make sure that the finished width is what you want it to be and that it matches the hardware that you have selected. So then before you fold it in half again, I will add a little bit more double-sided tape. And I'm going to put it in the center of one half to keep it out of the stitching line, the stitching path. And now you are going to fold it in half again and make sure your edges are lined up I like to use one of these for really pressing down everything into place. And now we are going to top stitch the strap with 1 8 inch 
seam allowance at both edges. We're going to cover up the raw edges if you're following the pattern as is, so you can go ahead and stitch across the raw edges too. And you can backstitch because this part at the end will be covered. In the pattern, I have a pattern piece for a strap end so that you don't end up seeing the raw end. Three of these ends are going to be wrapped around hardware. Because we have a strap short and a strap long, we have four strap ends and three of them are going to be wrapped around like that. So it's up to you whether you want to cover all of them or just cover the one that's going to be prominently visible. So here I have my piece and in the pattern I say to make this an inch wide but I ended up trimming it down so that it matches the width of my strap which is three quarter inches. I also just took a marker and drew uh, a fabric marker and covered the edges. I just put some double sided tape down the center and then you want to get this to be as close to halfway as possible. And just make sure it's centered on the strap left to right. I want the other side to be visible. can also just use a hardware strap end if you want, but only put it on this one for now on the one edge and the pattern will indicate when to put the other ones on because we're still going to need to get the strap through the buckle and everything, which we wouldn't be able to do if you put hardware on. So now all I'm going to do is follow this top stitching line and top stitch down the sides of this decorative strap end. And since I'm using leather, I'm going to pull the tail ends to the back side and tie them off. But you can back stitch if that look is fine with you. So now I have the long strap ready and the short strap ready. I did end up putting the strap ends on each end just because I decided I liked the way that looked. So the next thing you're going to want to do is take one end of strap long and begin three inches from the end. And here I'm actually going to use tape to mark that spot. So now we are going to punch five holes beginning at this three inch point and the holes are going to be two inches apart and you want to center it on the strap. So there I have five marks and you want to punch those at about three sixteenths of an inch because it needs to be sized to fit the pin of your buckle. So whatever buckle you're using, make sure there's enough room there when you punch your hole. So now I have the holes punched and we are going to take our strap short and if you did only put a strap end on one side, you're going to do this from the side that does not have the strap end. You're going to slide both strap keepers onto the strap. And you're going to put the seam at what will be the bottom of the strap. Move it in a few inches to keep it away from the end of the strap. 
and from this end, you are going to measure one and a half inches up from the end. And here you're going to make an oblong hole. And you can do like three hole punches in a row, um, but you basically want the hole to probably be about a little less than a half an inch, so maybe three eighths of an inch long. And here I can show you what I use. It's this cutter from a multi-piece cutting kit. And I use my Cam Snap table press. I just put a really strong magnet at the top and a cutting board type of thing at the bottom. And I just press down with this to get the cut. I also, if the insides are white or light colored, I also use that fabric marker again. And I have these in a few sizes, so I just kind of push it into the hole and twist the marker around to color in the inside edges because I don't use grommets. If you have grommets, and especially this oval size grommet, you can go ahead and install those, but I, I haven't done that. I just keep it like this. Now we're going to start to assemble the strap. So we start with the strap short that has the two strap keepers on it. We are going to feed the buckle. So first you're going to put the pin through the, the oval oblong hole and you're going to feed the end of the strap through. You're going to move one strap keeper up right near the buckle. You do not put the strap end through the strap keeper. This is gonna stay only enclosing one layer of the strap. Then you are going to either stitch through or put a rivet through the strap end to close this up again the strap keeper, make sure you don't put the rivet or any stitching through there. So that's the first part. So now we have that fixed in place and we are going to take the end, and this might depend on whether you have a strap end or not. You will feed it through. Put your pin through one of the holes, feed it through the first strap keeper, and then through the second strap keeper. And now we have our belt strap.